The Spy Kids franchise was created by Robert Rodriguez, who is most known for directing El Mariachi and From Dusk Till Dawn in the 1990s. Rodriguez is a very inspiring director. Starting at age 23, he directed El Mariachi in a one-man film crew style. Rodriguez often writes, directs, and produces most of his work on low budgets, stating that creativity, not money, is used to solve problems. I highly recommend his book, Rebel Without a Crew, if you are an aspiring director. There are many movies and games and now TV shows in the Spy Kids franchise, but we will be covering these four movies. The original Spy Kids, Spy Kids 2 The Island of Lost Dreams, Spy Kids 3D Game Over, and Spy Kids 4D All the Time in the World. These films were produced by Dimension Films and Troublemaker Studios. Let's start with the original Spy Kids. The movie opens to a lone house on a dangerous cliffside of the Cortez family. Here we see Carmen and her brother Junie getting ready for bed when Carmen asks to hear the story of how their parents met. Her mother tells them that her and their father were both spies with the coolest spy gear. Yep, that's where he's walking. Spies were true. What? They were assigned to kill each other but betray both their countries and don't. So they gave up spying and being cool, and now they're married, are pencil pushers for the OSS, and are raising these two bozos. Hurry up! I can... Die already! <laughs> Don't trip getting up, pancake. Jesus! Turns out Junie is getting bullied at school, probably because he watches this terrifying TV show, and wants to live in that world. I wish I could go away to your world, Sleep. Why? Floop is not only the TV show's host, but with the help of his minion, Minion, he is also an inventor, who also lives on a dangerous cliffside, but in a castle. Here we see Mr. Floop is showing off his weird inventions to a bunch of business guys and Mr. Lisp. So this guy, Mr. Lisp, wants Floop to make him an army and has already put down a billion dollars, but Floop is distracted from this literal weapons deal because of his kid show. Floop would try to make an army, and then end up with these things, and then use them on the show instead. One of his army attempts include these Thumb Thumbs, which are like thumb people. Now these I wanted to hate and be terrified of, but this is a genuine reaction from me. <laughs> Floop then unveils his next army attempt, robot kids that he calls spy kids for their superior knowledge in espionage. However, they're not quite finished. Back at the Cortez home, Gogorio is caught packing for an assignment given by Devlin, the director of the OSS, Mr. George Clooney, to rescue all four of the other spy field agents. And Ingrid's like, oh, I'm going with you. Ingrid, we have children now. I want to go on an adventure. Yeah, who cares about the kids? I want to go. Come on. Mm. And then they have this bizarre scene. Ingrid, Ingrid, Ingrid. What, 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 about, what about the children? <laughs> so I guess she gets to go, and they immediately get captured by Floop, and the Cortez house is raided by Thumb Thumbs. <laughs> the kids escape their house in a jet ski rocket pod submarine thing, which takes them to a safe house. Now, this safe house has some weird rules when it comes to food. Like, these cabinets don't have food in them when you first look. But when you go back and check, now there's food, like a spy. Then there's these dehydrated pucks of food that are awesome. What the hell? Check it out. Check it out. I got McDonald's. I even got the, even got the cardboard and the logo on it. Back at Fruit Loops Castle, the parents decide it's finally time to escape by using the most dangerous spy tool I've ever seen. She's still got it. Can I get a few more steps that I have to do before my ring shoots out a deadly laser? They run around Floops Castle and make it to the virtual room. Where are we? The virtual room. Sorry, I scared the birds. <laughs> which leads them to Floop's table. Turns out it was all a test to test their spyness. 
Which doesn't really matter if they pass or failed, as Floop explains that Gregorio was on the research team for an invention called the Third Brain, an AI brain with all the spy knowledge of the OSS, which honestly isn't much. Floop wants Gregorio to build him a third brain to use for his spy kids. And Gregorio's like, no. So Floop's like, peace. At the safe house, the kids are just being stupid. When they are visited by Miss Grandeco, an old boss of their parents. She explains that Floop's flugies, these terrifying things, are the missing OSS agents, and that you can hear their secret message when you play the intro for Floop's show backwards. Oh no, turns out these guys were traitors and are working for Floop, which makes it weird that they explain that Floop was a villain and that he has the missing agents. Miss Grandeco searches for and finds the third brain. That's what Floop wants. He's got the snitch! Harry Potter receives 150 points for catching the snitch! A henchman tries to fly away with it, but Carmen snags it. Back at the castle, Minion informs Floop that the Cortez kids have the brain and suggests that they at least use the strongest hell robot kids that they have just lying there to retrieve it. That is brilliant, Minion. Thank you. Sir? Which turns out to be a great idea because they easily steal the brain back and leave. We cut to the parents who are now tied down with chains this time. Gregorio explains that when he and his research team created the third brain that it was too powerful and that it had to be destroyed. But somehow this foolproof security measure failed and Gregorio pulled the old switcheroo and kept a brain for himself. We cut back to the kids who find their uncle Machete's shop. Yes, it's the same Machete from that movie, sort of. It's the same guy, but these movies are alternate universes. Carmen asks Machete to help rescue their parents, but Machete doesn't want to do it because... Machete's not responsible for nobody but Machete. You think I want to babysit my brother the rest of my life? Meanwhile, back at Floop's castle, Minion reveals that he has the brain now, and that he doesn't need Floop anymore, and orders Floop to be sent to the virtual room, but not before revealing his true identity. <laughs> back in Machete's, the kids agree that Machete is not going to go, so they raid his house, steal his plane, and miss trying to crash it into Floop's castle. As the Spy Kids robots are being given a brain, Carmen and Junie enter the castle in search of their parents. Again, they're dumb, so they just run out into the open and get caught. Luckily, the robots give them a head start. They decide they should split up, Junie to the virtual room, and Carmen to the depths of hell. In the virtual room, Junie finds Floop, who explains that Minion is in charge now, and that Floop did nothing wrong. So Minion is the evil one. Yes. Then Junie confesses his love for Floop, which frees them both. You're my hero, Floop. They find Carmen after her journey through the Inferno, and find and free their parents. We cut to Minion, who is meeting with the clients when he is called away by... Uh, Floop? The Cortez family then lure him into the room, appear from the ground, tie him to the chair, and give him a button that if he releases will horribly mutate him. Like spies do. However, this is exactly what Minion wants, because apparently Flugies have super strength, and it only changes the, the pitch of his voice, and it doesn't reverse it. Oh, don't worry. I think it's reversible. We cut back to the Cortez family and Floop. Floop explains that if they can get to the control room, he can reprogram the Spy Kids robots. But on the way, the top-notch spy parents get captured again and put in chains. Again! Floop, Carmen, and Junie make it to the control room and basically tell Floop to wrap up the movie while they go find their parents. Teach them to be good! But it's not that simple! Figure it out, we'll be back for you. The parents escape their chains for some reason and land right in front of the bad guys for some reason. Like, why here? Like, they're going to attack them with Spy Kids in a second, but why here? I don't get it. Carmen and Junie make it to the room, and their parents use them as human shields to fight the incoming kid robots. 
And Danny Trejo's there too, why not? So they accept their fate. But just then, Floop reprograms the robots to be good, which I guess means toss the bad guys joyously through the air. So now all the robot kids are good and stealing hardworking American jobs. And even Floop got to keep his show. Ah, Cortez's. An emergency assignment has come up in the Far East. Devlin has a new mission, but not for the parents. No, this assignment is for Carmen and Junie. They're the ones we need. They're the two most amazing field agents that this organization's ever seen. The best agents you've ever seen? Really? Okay. All right. <laughs> And finally, we are left with a, a cliffhanger. I'm not, I'm not really sure. And that's the mission worth fighting for. So that was the first Spy Kids movie. I thought that movie was okay. It's a great start to the series by establishing storylines and introducing the main kids to the spying world, but that's not always interesting to watch. It's necessary, but it's not always interesting. On to the next film, Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams. We begin with the Dimension and Troublemaker Studios splash logos, although I'm not sure how riding a roller coaster makes you a trouble. Oh my god! <gasps> so, yes, the studio's logo is the mascot for this fictional park by the same name. The president's daughter is doing a photo op at the park owned by this man, Dinky who has some interesting rides. Of course, right behind me, the world famous whippersnapper. Oh my god! You know what's crazier than these rides? These people who got on the rides. He spins it round and round as fast as the United States government will allow. So this is all regulated. So an inspector came in, saw this, and said, oh, this is fine, just, just don't make it go very fast. The president's daughter wants to ride this one and sabotages it, allowing her to climb out. Why that little troublemaker? Why the president's daughter is in grave danger in my park? Yuck. Shoo. The Secret Service claim that this task is too difficult, for they are tall adults. So they send in our heroes. Bring me agents SK-1 and SK-2. Coming through. Let's through. Then they're like, wait, what if they like totally fail? Bring me agents SK-3 and SK-4 is back up. This is Gary and Gertie, sort of rival spy kid agents. So they basically just send two pairs of kid agents without telling the first pair that they called the second pair on a mission to rescue the president's daughter that they can't go on because they're too tall. They're just so dying tall. Junie and Gary reach the president's daughter who explains that she will not get down until she can speak with her father. I promise you, the two of you will have that talk. How can you promise that? I'm level two. I can order him to talk to me. You hear that? Level two kid children spy agents can order the president of the United States to do anything. And there's still another level up to be promoted to. As Junie is helping her down, she explains that she took the transmooker device to get the attention of her father. The transmooker at this point is an ominous, powerful device. I mean, look at these guys. Oh, boys. Ooh. I think this is what you're looking for. Ooh. She swiped it from the president. Ooh. We skip ahead to a gala event where the president is announcing the next OSS director. The new director of the OSS, Gregor Donegan Giggles. Lennon dumps it off his- Holy- Oh my goodness, what a lick! So Donegan becomes the next OSS director and immediately commits an act of nepotism by promoting both his children and assigning them to the big mission called the Yukata mission. Who wanted that assignment? This is so <laughs> Then all the adults get sleepy and start taking a nap. giving the magnet henchman a chance to take the transmooker device from the president, who one, has possession of it, and two, brought it to the party. So now, it's up to the spy kids to stop them. They fail, and the magnet men magnet away with the device. No, no, they took the transmooker device. 
They took the transport relay! Why did you bring it to the event if it was so precious? And even though it's everyone's fault that the device was stolen, they're all like, Junie. Junie, you fool! How could you have let this happen? You? Even this guy's like, not nah, cool, man. I thought you were different, man. And then they fire him for it. Carmen is also upset because she wanted the Yukata mission, so she decides to help Junie out. They do some actual spying on Donegan to get the mission briefing. Carmen then, within seconds, hacks into the OSS to first rehire Junie, then promote him and herself to level 1 agents, reassign her and Junie to the Yukata mission, and then finally reassign Gary and Greddy to a crappy situation. Carmen and Junie decide that they are going to get the transmooker device back to clear Junie's name. On the way to the mission location, Carmen gets her favorite meal, and they call up an old friend. Junie Cortez. Yes, they call up Mr. Floop to talk to Minion, who is uh, not evil anymore, and got his voice back. Bueno. Minion explains that Donegan might be involved with the stealing of the transmooker device. And to find out more, they need to find the island and then the island man. Just as they reach their location, their sub's power shuts off and they crash, forcing them to bail out and float to the top. We cut to Gregorio who is arguing with Ingrid about her parents visiting when Donegan informs them that not only were their children rehired, promoted, and reassigned to the most coveted mission, but that they are also missing in action. Oh, and... Your parents are here. Oh no, what are they gonna do? Just leave them there. They just, they just leave them there. They just, they just leave. Hi. We cut back to Junie and Carmen when the island just appears. A giant serpent monster appears behind them, pops their suits, which sends them skipping across the ocean to the shore of the island where they discover that none of their spy gadgets work. Then we cut to this beautiful little scene. Director of the OSS's office. Big. <laughs> what if what you fell? That's a lame office. But yeah, it's big, dude. Good, good job, it's big. Look at that, yeah, it's big. So Donegan calls to say that he is on the way to the island. Gary and Greddy also arrive to the island in a somewhat similar fashion. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't like that. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Carmen and Junie find and jump into a volcano and fall for hours until they fall into the island man's chamber. This is Romero. Science. He explains that he is a genetic specialist that has been trying to make miniature zoos to sell to the public, but he wanted to make bigger zoos. You know, for kids with meatier hands. Big meaty claws! But even with the most precise measurements, things go wrong and they grow massive. <laughs> but he somehow survives this. He then explains that he also created a big transmooker device that cloaks the island by disabling all electronics, which is why Donegan is after it. You see, this one was a prototype and not as powerful as the real one, which is which is the real one that they that they really want. Carmen decides that they need to find the transmooker and destroy it so Donegan cannot use it. They want Romero to go with them, but he's all like, I'm not going out there. You can't make me! And he's got first-hand experience with these monsters, so I trust him to know that these things are dangerous. <gasps> then they enter this dumb, omek looking temple thing where they gain telepathy and fight skeletons. I don't even, not even the characters know what's going on at this point. <laughs> and then Carmen is taken away by a flying pig. The pig takes her back to its nest where Greddy is also, which I guess happened. They don't they don't, they don't ever show that. They can leave this nest at any time but wait until the actual last moment to do so 
and make a point of it. When the moment comes, you'll know. I think that moment's come. <laughs> Carmen and Greddy find Gary and Judy battling with their island monsters because they gave them nut bars. You gave me food, so now I, I will fight for you to death. <laughs> Judy wins with the help of Carmen and his spider monkey monster friend. <laughs> Meanwhile, Donegan is on his way to the island and is absolutely jazzed about it. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen and Junie find the transmuger device and need to free it. Junie flips two of the switches down, then says, Said there's something tricky about the third switch. That's when Gary, Greddy, Romero, Donegan, and Hitchman number six come in, causing Junie to panic and flip the third switch. The entire world will shut down instantly. Good going, cheese. But I guess it's not instant because Junie and Carmen have time to flip the switches back up which releases the transmooker. Duh. Then Donegan makes a very convincing argument. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Or else. But Carmen has fallen for this one one too many times. No, no, no. And instead throws the device to a flying pig. They all start heading for the pig's nest when Carmen and Junie realize that without the transmooker in place, their gadgets work again. They use their spy gear and get the transmooker device back. Meanwhile, Romero is being eaten alive by his own creations. The kid was right. How did you not know that? You were there the first night. Whatever. Carmen and Junie's parents and grandparents find them. when they are all stopped by Donegan. Felix uses his almighty strength to retrieve the transmuker device back, and Donegan instructs his 10-year-old to reprogram the device to... I want to start by wiping the Cortez family from the face of the earth. Sure thing, Pops. We'll get right on that. Gertie? Ah! Why? Greddy plays this off like this was all planned, but I think she just legit broke the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She then threatens to tell on him to their mom. Just wait till mom finds out you try to take over the world again. No, please, please, please. Don't tell your mother. How are you going to keep ruling the world a secret from your wife? <laughs> what? We only like the car design. That's the, that's it. That's the only design I'm going to be riding in. The president arrives with his daughter, not in search of that device that was so precious earlier, but to first fire Donegan, temporarily disavow Gary, and make Gregorio the new director of the OSS. <laughs> she then tries to properly promote Juni, although I don't know how she has the power to do any of these things, but Juni declines and says that he is quitting the OSS due to the pressure it takes to be a high-level agent. But what about all the cool gadgets? And what about being able to order the President of the United States to do anything? And finally, before they leave the island, Romero gives them one final goodbye gift. And that was Spy Kids 2, The Island of Lost Dreams. I don't know about Lost Dreams, but I really like this sequel. The kids are actually doing some real spying, which is what I wanted to see, because it's called Spy Kids, so that was good. So those were the first two films in the franchise. Great films. There are tons of great scenes that I did not go over, so go watch the films to see that. I put a link in the description on how you can get these movies, so... Go, go get them. I'll have to go over the last two films another time in a different video. But for now, if you like the video, like it, share it around, and thanks for watching. You think 
God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? What the f what? 